And in this video lecture, we'll be looking at the titration of strong acids and strong bases. After watching the videos, you guys will be able to explain neutralization and write neutralization equations. You'll be able to calculate titration problems from data that's been provided. And of course, you'll be able to draw and label parts of a pH curve. So before we can do titration problems, we need to first understand neutralization. So neutralization occurs when we mix an acid with a base. When you mix acids and bases together, they react to form a salt and water. Okay, and we're gonna look at two different examples of um, uh, acid-base neutralizations, and uh, then we're gonna discuss. So we have uh, two sets of uh, acids and bases here. Um, in example one, we have HCl, which is a strong acid. Um, and NaOH, which is a strong base. Um, and in example two, we have HF, which is a weak acid. And again, um, NaOH, which is a strong base. Okay, so um, when the HCl and NaOH come together, um, the H plus from the HCl is going to combine with the OH minus from the hydroxide, and you're going to end up with your H2O. And then the remaining uh, sodium and chloride ions are going to form your NaCl salt. Okay, so um, this is the reaction process. Um, you'll see something very similar in the case of HF and NaOH. Um, you'll once again end up with H2O and a salt. In this case, though, your salt is going to be NaF. Okay, so now both of these reactions of an acid and a base um, produce a salt and water. Okay, so neutralization has occurred. However, guys, when we think of neutralization, a lot of times we'll think of the pH scale and we'll think of the pH value being uh, 7. Okay, now in the case of the strong, strong titrations, your pH of that uh, resultant solution, assuming that all of the HCl and NaOH have reacted, will equal 7. Um, however, in the case of the weak strong combo, um, the pH will not equal 7, okay? And we'll talk about the reason behind that in AP chemistry, um, but what I want you guys to understand from neutralization is that the neutralization is the reaction between an acid and a base to produce salt and water. Um, it does not mean that the solution you're creating has a pH of 7, or at least it doesn't always mean that. The only time that that will apply is if you're mixing a strong acid and a strong base. So let's go ahead and let's talk about uh, some of the pieces required to perform titrations. Um, so pH indicators um, are actually molecules that um, are usually like organic acids that actually uh, have specific colors. And their colors are going to correspond to the pH value of the solution that they're sitting in. Um, so here's uh, some examples of the colors you may see uh, when using specific indicators. Um, for strong, strong titrations, we're going to use something called phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is colorless in acidic solutions, but turns uh, a nice pink color, um, which you can see here, uh, in the presence of basic uh, ions. So basically, titration occurs uh, when we take a uh, standard solution um, or an unknown, okay, um, and we're going to use it to figure out the concentration of an unknown um, solution. Okay, so what's going to happen here is that we take what our known is, which is known as the titrant, okay, um, and then we're going to analyze our analyte. Okay, um, by basically taking advantage of the neutralization process. So what happens is we're going to take our known, which you know could be an acid or a base, um, and we're going to add it to the unknown acid or base. Okay, and um, when we reach what's known as the equivalence point, okay, so H plus and OH minus uh, concentrations are equal, that's when we will have finished our titration. Now, um, we're going to also add in a... Um, tool to help us kind of know approximately where this equivalence point is happening visually. Okay, and so that's where the indicator comes into effect. You know, we add our known um, uh, uh, titrant, we have our analyte down here, our unknown, and to this container down here, we add indicator. Okay, and what will happen is, as we change the pH of the solution down here, the color of that solution will eventually change. And once it's changed slightly, um, and we see the color that we're expecting with that indicator, we've reached what's called the endpoint. 
And at that point, we assume that we have reached the equivalence point. Now, endpoint and equivalence point are not the same thing. Um, equivalence point is the point at which the H plus and the OH minus concentrations are exactly the same. The end point may be a little bit beyond that, um, but that's why we perform the titration with um, uh, burettes, which uh, give lots of significant figures, um, so that even if we are off, it's just by a little bit. Okay, now, um, another thing we need to look at here is something called a pH curve. Okay, so the pH curve is going to be monitoring um, or, or allow us to monitor or kind of analyze what's happening to our pH as the reaction progresses. Okay, so remember, um, down in our Erlenmeyer, um, in this particular titrations example, we have an acid, okay, and to it, okay, we're adding base. Okay, and so if I take the pH of the solution that's in the Erlenmeyer, we know it's going to start out low. Okay, but as we add base, it's going to start to increase, right? The pH is going to increase. Now, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to reach that point where your H plus and your OH minus are equal. Okay, and that's why we'll see a nice little vertical shift on the pH curve. Okay, the equivalence point is that most vertical portion. Okay, um, and then as you continue to add base, obviously your pH will also continue to increase past the equivalence point. Okay, so what I want you to notice about the uh, pH curve is you have your pH on your y-axis, you have the titrant um, or the known solution um, volume on the x-axis, um, and basically you're going to have this curve that represents what's happening um, to the pH inside this container. Okay? So um, titrations is how they're performed, um, and there's lots of kind of little various uh, uh, variations of this, um, but these are kind of the, this is kind of the general idea. Now, uh, titrations and performing them are great, but we also need to be able to do the mathematics uh, to help us figure out the concentration of that unknown. Um, and that's where this uh, equation comes into effect. Now, you guys have already seen the M1V1 equals M2V2 equation. Um, this is just kind of a um, adjustment to that. Um, the A's here represent acid. The B's here represent base. Okay. Um, this still, uh, big M, still represents molarity. <coughs> Okay, V represents volume, okay, and N represents moles of H plus or OH minus, okay? Now, in the case of NA, that's going to be moles of H plus. In the case of NB, that's going to be your moles of OH minus. So in this problem here, they told us that we have 42.5 milliliters of 1.3 molar KOH. Um, and that's what we're using to titrate 50 milliliters of H2SO4. Now, the unknown in this case is going to be your H2SO4. Okay, so this is your unknown, okay, and this is your known, okay? Now, if we were to label where these belong in terms of our pieces of equipment, right, we know that our H2SO4 is going to be down here in our Erlenmeyer, and our burette is going to have our KOH. Now, this doesn't always have to be the case, um, but they're telling us here that this is the quantity of KOH um, used to titrate this substance. So the analyte is what gets titrated. Okay, so vocabulary-wise, make sure you're comfortable with that. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the mathematics. Let's go ahead and write out all our variables. So we've broken down all of our variables, written them all out. We got our concentration of our base, got our volume in our, of our base, got our number of our moles of our base, okay? And we've done the same things with our acid. Now I want you guys to notice the NB and the NA. Notice we have the moles of B is going to be 1, and the moles associated with A um, is going to be 2 for the um, H3O plus and hydroxide, okay? Now, where am I getting this from? Well, I want you guys to notice that the KOH, there's one equivalent of hydroxide for every potassium uh, hydroxide uh, molecule or unit, okay? So since there's a one-to-one -one relationship, N is gonna be equal to one. Now, if you notice over here, we have a diprotic acid known as H2SO4. There are actually two protons there. Um, so that's where I'm getting the moles of H plus um, as two here for my Na. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my equation, I'm gonna manipulate and solve for the Ma variable. Okay, so now that we've solved for our Ma, our molarity of A, we're then gonna plug in our values. If we 
We'll log in all these values. We end up with 0 0.5525. Okay, um, units wise, um, liters and liters cancel. Um, and we're going to be left with molarity, right? Okay, um, and then sig fig wise, we're going to have two sig figs coming from our 1.3 molar concentration. Okay, so that's going to give a 0 0.55 molar H2SO4 as the concentration of our unknown acid. So now we've utilized titration. Um, to calculate and figure out the concentration of our unknown acid.